All right. Well, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome our staff, the public, uh, industry, whoever else is uh, watching this morning. We're going to be briefed on research and test reactors and research and test reactor initiatives this morning. We're going to have two panels. And uh, the briefing today is going to provide an overview of the licensing program for research and test reactors, including the status of license renewals. We're going to have discussions regarding the domestic production of medical isotopes and research uh, and test reactor security initiatives as well. So the first panel is an external panel and includes uh, three folks. Dr. Tom Newton, chair of the National Organization of Test Research and Training Reactors and director of operations and associate director of reactor engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, I should say that Tom and I do go back quite a few years <laughs> when I worked at MIT's right. research reactor. Um, so it's nice to see you here. And you too. Dr. Gregory, P Gregory Pfeiffer, Chief Executive Officer of Shine Medical Technologies, and Mr. Les Foito, Associate Director for Reactor and Facility Operations, Missouri University Research Reactor. So we're going to have a short break after the first panel. We're going to you guys are going to talk for about 10 or 15 minutes each or whatever your mm. allotted times are. Uh, and then we'll have questions from the commission. Then we'll have a short break. We'll hear from the staff panel as well after that. So that's how things are going to go. Um, <clears throat> let me turn to my fellow commissioners and see if anybody has any opening remarks. No? OK. I'm going to start with the staff panel and hear our staff's views and analysis on research and test reactors. So I'll turn things over to Mike Johnson, who is Acting Executive Director for Operations. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. The staff is here today to provide an update on research and test reactor activities. Uh, Lawrence Kakaiko, to my right, is the Director of the, of the Division of Policy and Rulemaking. Lawrence is going to provide an overview of the licensing and oversight activities within the research and test reactor licensing branches. Al Adams is to my left. Al is Chief of the Research and Test Reactor Licensing Branch. Uh, and his, uh, he'll cover efforts to complete the research and test reactor license renewal uh, reviews and to streamline future reviews. To his, step, to his left is Steve Lynch, project manager for the research and test reactors licensing branch. He'll discuss the staff's progress in developing infrastructure uh, and conducting reviews in support of medical uh, radioisotope production facility licensing. And finally, uh, John Adams, all the way to my right, is the senior level advisor for non-power reactors. And he's going to discuss security aspects of research and test reactors. So with that, uh, Lawrence will begin our presentation. Thank you, Mike, and good morning. The research and test reactor licensing and oversight branches oversee the operation of 31 research and test reactors, enabling these facili facilities to carry out their missions of education, research, and service. These branches are responsible for all licensing, inspection, operator licensing, and security at these licensed facilities. In recent years, the responsibilities of these branches have expanded to include the initial licensing reviews of proposed medical radioisotope production facilities. Additionally, these branches have provided project management for the review of the Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier propulsion plant for naval reactors and supported the effort led by the Department of Energy to convert NRC licensees from high enriched to low enriched uranium. Next slide, please. Since beginning operation in the 1950s, research and test reactors have been important in the advancement of science, engineering, medicine, and education in the United States. As a result of these research-centric missions, the designs of research and test, reactor, test reactors present unique risk profiles. Accident scenarios analyzed at these facilities are primarily related to the manipulation of radioactive materials within the facility, which are not expected to result in releases, radioactive releases to the public. Accounting for the unique purpose and design of research and test reactors, Section 104C of the Atomic Energy Act, 1954, requires the imposition of the minimum amount of regulations that will promote security, protect safety, and permit research and development. This morning, we will elaborate on our accomplishments, areas of focus, and future plans with respect to maintaining safety and security at the existing research and test reactors and the proposed radio, medical radioisotope production facilities. And not to be superfluous, you're going to find out today why I like this particular job so much. 